Sure, we have 30 seconds to tell you that drivers who switch to Progressive could save big. But then what? Well, there is a nice piece of stock music playing behind me that a talented composer worked really hard on. So let's enjoy it. Wow, almost overshadows the saving big when you switch to progressive part. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Target has laundry day covered because they offer a great selection of concentrated Tide Pods to help with all your laundry needs. Tide Pods clean, freshen, and help rejuvenate your clothes with odor fighters and stain removers. Did you know Tide Pods clean better than the leading liquid bargain detergent? Tide Pods are powerful enough to make your whites white and your brights bright, even in cold water. Just toss in one Tide Pod for small loads, two for medium, three for large. It's that easy. For great value and convenient pickup options, get Tide Pods today at Target. Welcome in, welcome in to the Eric Zane Show podcast, a daily show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures each and every day of the of the work week. And uh well, the summer can officially begin. Because the queen has returned. My beloved better half is with me. She has returned from the school-sponsored East Coast trip. Uh, She gathers all the uh, eight-year-olds, eight-year-olds, eighth graders, keeps them in line as a chaperone, three busfuls of eighth graders. Oh, God. This is a reminder of, for me, of like, you know, what it would be like if suddenly she decides that she wants to be married to some enormous black man. Or what it's like to be without your queen of the forest. You have your own queen of the forest or king of the forest. Some of you are queens with queens of the forest, and some of you are kings with kings of the forest, depending on your preference, which in some parts of the country can probably get you killed. The queen of the forest returned uh, right at the time that I get out of bed today. They drove all night from Hershey Park in Hershey, PA. Been to that place once. It's not bad. It's a good park. Good time. They uh, they drove all night. And here she is. So now, now, officially, summer can get going. So happy that you all are here. Along, Well, I'm happy the queen of the forest is back home. I'm happy that you're all here. I got my dogs. I got my podcast. I got Kyle from Dumpster Divers. He's going to join me at about 9, 9 a.m. Eastern time. Awesome. Freaking killing it. Um, All right. So this show happens each and every weekday in the Baldwin Ace Hardware Fear Bunker Studio. Baldwin Ace Hardware. The uh, kings of the DIY awesome. Wait a minute. I said that wrong. King of DIY awesomeness in the Northland is what I wanted to say. A lot of king and queen talk going on here. I don't know where my brain is today. I was just watching a video that I'm going to get into a little bit later on. That's kind of like occupying my mind. Uh, all right. I I, uh, I heard from John John F. Who uh, is in law enforcement. John writes... About the cop drowning video. You know, the homeless guy who said, all right, all right I'm getting out of here. I'm going to jump in the water. And then he, he he went under and he says, help me, help me. They said, well, we're not helping you. And they just literally stood there and watched him die. We've been talking about this all week. Excuse me. I have to finish this coffee. If it, it's staring at me and it's, it's screaming out, we're getting colder. You got to drink us. If you drink just a little bit too cold of coffee, it's a it's a bad thing. Hang on. 
There's plenty more. There's plenty more. Hang on. Mm, 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 mm. So embarrassing. Got too much in my mouth. John writes 15 year. Cause I, you know, I, that was uh, very harsh and critical on those cops and said, they're scumbags. They should be arrested, fired and charged for not jumping in to save the guy. There's been numerous, um, people that have come out of the woodwork experts saying, well, no, they actually did the right thing. And I don't, I don't believe that. I don't care if RoboCop himself says they did the right thing. I, I no, they didn't. John writes 15 year veteran cop here. I wanted to give a perspective on the Tempe PD thing. Saving a drowning person is quite likely to get the rescuer drowned. Let's stop right there. Quite likely. I dispute that right there. Like how likely like there's a chance because if there's a chance, that's not quite likely, you know, I think you got to be careful with that comment. The person drowning enters a fight or flight mode and all bets are off. Now that I do believe when you, um, when you get in there, I can imagine that there would be like some swinging of the arms and things like that. They no longer consider the would-be rescuer's life and will use them as a stepping stone of sorts. Yeah, perhaps. Your analogy of not helping someone lying on the ground isn't comparable. You don't die from too much air around you or filling your lungs. Water is a different story, obviously. Additionally, my better half is a a medical legal death investigator. Wow, you guys are like a... uh, a husband, wife, you're like a TV show. You know, if there could be such a thing. Cop and medical legal death investigator. My God. How'd you two meet? In the evidence room, if you know what I mean. So many drowning deaths in the Nashville area are secondary drownings involving the rescuer becoming a victim because the original party pulls them under. Pull me under, pull me under. Is that, uh, who sings that? Pull me under. Is that, um, Dream Theater? Yeah, it is. It's a freaking sweet song. If you're into, um, theatrical butt rock metal, theatrical prog metal. You into prog rock, man? What is that? Prog rock. Oh, you know, Rush, Yes, and Dream Theater. Are there any other prog rockers? No. Oh, well, why don't you just say Rush, Yes, and Dream Theater? Or maybe uh, King Crimson. Got to uh, throw King Crimson in the prog rock discussion. You into prog rock? What's that? Four bands. Um. Blah, 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 involving the uh, rescuer becomes a victim because the original party pulls them under. Then John writes, throw a rope, form a chain, pitch a line, more viable options. Well, yeah, I agree with that. Those are more viable options. None of which were even attempted. Thus the problem. I would suggest if the rope chain pitch a line aren't available you gotta jump in john says i'd suggest not jumping in the water to save someone that's drowning well i hope i don't hope i don't get in trouble with you standing around you and your uh, quincy wife that's a reference to an old jack klugman tv show where he was all creepy unless it's your kid or family especially for an asshole you see here's the problem everybody no one wants to help this guy that's why they're taking sides here 
The reason why so many people are taking sides on this is because it's a homeless guy. And uh, a great percentage of the population hate homeless people. So if you're on the uh, side of, okay, uh, don't jump in and help him. It's because it's a homeless guy. That's what's going on here. If it were a kid or a, an old lady, you'd be like, oh my God, we got to do it. You got to do something. It'd be 100% agreement. But it's a, a stinky homeless guy. So no one gives a shit about homeless people. We all know it. Don't act like it's not true. Come on now. Especially for an asshole, John writes, who can't swim and jumped in to be a dick. Well, okay, there's the snake in the grass. Especially for an asshole who can't swim and jumped in to be a dick. It sounds to me, John, like I'm hearing a little, ha, serves him right coming out of you there. I'm sorry, but uh, I just... You wrote it. I'm just reading it. As I finish this, he writes, it sounds like you're addressing a professional's opinion saying they did right. No, I didn't. I, I called Jason Schaefer, who's uh, 10 years in law enforcement. He got out of the game. Um, I don't think Jason necessarily said they did right. If I remember correctly, uh, Jason was disgusted at the lack of care. I rode back to John. He seems like a nice guy. Well, except for the line with, especially for an asshole who can't swim and jumped in to be a dick. I wrote, I get all of this. It makes perfect logical sense. What my pal Jason Chafer indicated was their demeanor as they stood there while the man died. They had no urgency to do anything. All caps. That is the problem. Despite all of the logical reasons why the cops shouldn't have helped, which I feel are wrong, the only thing I would have attempted would have been illogical. But a better decision nonetheless, in my opinion. And as we all know, my opinion trumps everyone's. If you have an opinion, if mine is the same then yours is right. If mine is different, then mine is right. I forgot to say thanks for the feedback and the correspondence. I love hearing from the audience. I appreciate your input. Speaking of cops, it may be another free chocolate day, free candy day at Kilwins as in downtown Grand Rapids. Be, it might be a, a lot of free things because at 3 p.m. today, the Kent County, which is the county right next to where I'm at, prosecutor Chris Becker is going to announce whether the cop that shot the dude in the back of the head is going to face any charges. They announced that that's happening today, 3 p.m. The family is already pissed off. The family of dead guy. Uh, they are pissed because they said you should have uh, come to us first and told us behind closed doors that this was going to happen. And, you know, if you're trying to... Um, uh, persuade the public that you are impartial the first thing you should do is remain impartial and part of that would be no you're not getting anybody telling you i'm not gonna like bend your ear and say hey guess what this is happening first or uh, you know telling them first no it's their job is to assess the information and decide now the way this is being built up, let me just say, if there is, um, unless they say that um, Chris Schur, the cop who shot Patrick Lyoya in the back of the head, I've never not said that uh, name clearly. I always struggle with his last name. 
dead guy. If they say we have decided we are pursuing murder one charges and uh, as of this moment, he's guilty and we're going to go kill him. Unless they say that, I think there's going to be some degree of uh, hell raising going on in the beautiful city of downtown Grand Rapids. And I don't know. I've just uh, personal vibe. I think that it may go down the road. I don't know. I, I, I've had mixed mixed thoughts. Uh, in one breath, I'm like, I think he's going to be charged with something very serious. or, And then like half an hour later, I'm like, I don't think this guy's going to be charged with anything. I, I mean, I don't know. You can just sit there and speculate all day. Um, some suggested another Eric St. Joe podcast viewing party. I'm not going to do that. I, I don't... Uh, it's not that I, I'm above that, believe me. That's not a bad thing. I'm just super busy, so I can't do it. But today is the day for that in the beautiful city of Grand Rapids, Kent County. And uh, we shall see. We shall see. Um, all right. I'm already off and running and uh, diving into things that I did not plan on talking about. Honestly, Everything I talked about, I plan to talk about in the first 20 so minutes of this show have already not happened as I've talked about other things. So let me just tell you this, that if you are enjoying the show on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, I'm about to cut the cord. There's plenty more show. I've got another hour and 40 minutes of uh, things to talk about on this show, on this podcast, this free podcast that happens every day right here. However, if you want to get the rest of it as it happens live, there's only one place, twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. Go there, put your stupid username in, it'll take you three seconds, and then you can catch the rest of the show. Twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. Hit follow so that you know when I go live and that we won't have this awkwardness every time. I'm slowly but surely trying to get everybody who's watching it on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to watch it on Twitch, okay? So that's uh, that's what we do. And then, of course... If you ever want the audio podcast afterwards, what you're hearing right now, what uh, what I'm doing right now, becomes the audio podcast, which you can get wherever you download podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Twatcher, Twatter, Fucker, all those things. Spotify. So, okay. That's what's up. So, thank you if you did check this out, but uh, you're out of here. You are gone. So, thank you. Okay. Now it's just you and I and Bruce here in the background. Life is good. Life is good. Twitter and Facebook. I'm sorry. I do this, do this every time. Twitch and Twitter sound too much alike. Twitch and Facebook brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. YouTube brought to you by Frank Fuss. My Policy Shop Insurance. And then, of course, Twitter brought to you by Blue Frost IT. Still fat as hell. Uh, yesterday, went back to the gym. I spent most of the day, every moment that I could, in my Strasburg sock. Thank you, Mike Ball. For eliminating an excuse. It's a lot better than duct taping your leg. Um, I think I'm making some progress. Because um, after keeping my foot in the sling. Every moment of the day. With the exception of when I'm walking. Uh, that is what is causing this heel. My actual heel. H-E-E-L. To heel. H-E-A-L. Uh, then I put it through uh, an extreme amount of exertion when I actually do the workout. And then it's tender as hell. And then back in the sling. That's the only way this is going to happen. I was reading that the plantar fasciitis, what I have, can, if you don't take care of it, lead to actual tearing of soft tissue on your heel, which would lead to a collapsed arch. Oh, God. I got to show you this. Okay. Plantar 
fascia cadaver. Okay. So this is the bottom of a foot that's been (laughs) dissected. Sorry if you're eating breakfast. That's not that bad. Come on. Oh, shit. Okay. So this thing here that looks like uh, a webbing, that's the plantar fascia. And right here on the heel is where it hurts your old pal Eric. Okay. And mine's like inflamed. And then it uh, there's this thin band and then it goes to each toe. Okay. If that ruptures, you're fucked. Boy, that's gross looking. But that is what that is what the problem is. So because of Mike Ball, of all people, providing the uh, a, a foot sling, the Strasburg sock, I am I'm doing OK. No excuses. I feel great. Yesterday's workout was awesome. Again, still fat as hell. Uh, I weighed uh, this morning 180.4 pounds. Um, and, you know, that continues to be a struggle. I didn't really eat bad yesterday. You know, um, it's just going to take some time. But the workout was good. I was strong. I ran my, uh, I did half mile repeats. And here's the thing. You do the uh, first half mile. Um, I, I talked to you about on Monday, I did mile repeats. Wednesday is a half mile repeat. You run a little harder, you know, because it's shorter distance. And, uh, oh my God, did those kick my ass. But um, the third one, because you do one and then you do a quarter mile like jogging. And then you go right into the next one, then jog again, and then right into the third one. The third one, I got it done in 331. No, 333, which is uh, 706 a mile pace. I was exhausted. To be able to... uh, hit the time that I'm going to need to beat Mike Ball. Those repeats are going to need to be about 650 pace. All right. Manageable. Manageable. Not there, but technically we haven't even started the 16-week training program. Again, I know everything there is to know about this. Okay? I've done this before. And I feel like I am ready to go. I am prime in a prime position to beat this guy's ass and not a single one of you believe in me none of you it was one year ago that i was trying to let you know the same thing but i wasn't there okay now i'm right in the head uh i'm not i'm not injured well i'm injured but i'm taking care of it and i still i haven't been very uh, uh you none of you believe me there is no mike is so assured that I am not going to beat him. He's doubled the pot. So if I win, if you pick me and by the closest time, you will win $600. What an asshole. I haven't yet talked about the fundraiser and how you bet, but I, I'll have a website for you to go to and you can take care of all that. Got some celestial excitement for you. I know you're thrilled. Do any of you ever go to the uh, website Qora? Q-U-O-R-A. People ask interesting questions. And then people who know a thing or two about it will weigh in with an answer. Okay? So, you know, if some of you guys ask questions like, uh, why is the government uh, ramming this vaccine that will kill us down and jamming it into our bodies? Uh, Some expert would then explain to you, that you're stupid. For example, Charles writes, if we find a planet that is one light year away with humans on it, how long would it take for us to meet them with our current technology? What a wonderful question. So we find there's humans humans there one light year away I mean, that sounds like uh, daunting, but there's no doubt that at least over uh, one lifetime, 
we could pull this off, right? You know, like that scene in Interstellar where there, he's, he's in the thing for extended time and the spaceship and everybody it continues to get old. You know, years pass of flying. Oh, my God. Love that movie so much. Um, this person, who is a chief engineer at some place, says light travels at 5.878 trillion miles in a year. The fastest spacecraft today travels 315 million miles in one year. Now, when I saw that, I thought, okay, all right, a few years, right? Maybe not. If you divide how far light can travel in one year by how far we can go in one year, the amount of years it would take is 18,628.2 years. <laughs> More than 18,000 years to get to a place that is one light year from Earth at our current fastest speed. However, there is an update. This person wrote, at the time when I first answered this question, we humans had made a space traveling vessel that could travel 36,015 miles per hour in space or 315.5 million miles in one year. So that brought me to 18,600 years to go one light year at that speed. However, the Parker solar probe travels 4.6 times faster than that, putting it in the range of 153 454 miles per hour. So we can now travel one light year from earth 4.26 times faster, which would put us on track to get to one light year from earth in 4,372 years. So that's uh, uh, quite an advancement. Even if we could make it one year, if we could travel at the speed of light, even that one year in space sounds ridiculous to me. That would be a one year in space with like, you know, how like in Star Wars when they make the jump to light speed and all the fucking white shits flying at them. That's what it would be, which I wonder if it even looks like that. Probably not, but we've all convinced ourselves because of films that it does. And how do you not run into anything? If you're going that fast, you would just be like, well, okay, but what if I'm going that fast and I happen to collide with a fucking planet at the speed of light? Holy shit. Or if, okay, yeah, you make it there you get to where all the humans are like, oh my God, here they are, they're coming. And then, you know, yeah, you've attained the speed of light, but uh, how about the braking speed? How long is it going to take to slow down from that shit? I leave a hell of a crater. Thank you to Rob in New Jersey who sent me not celestial excitement. Rob, this is great. I love this. But nautical excitement yeah that's right i said it nautical excitement this right here is a vessel that was sunk i think in 1708 look at this this was sank in 1708 by uh, Great Britain, the Royal Navy sank this vessel in 1708 during the war of what's called uh, the war of the Spanish Spanish succession. Do you say secession or succession? I think you say secession. They're seceding. Spain wanted out. England's like, no way. Fuck you. And uh, they had a war, I guess. Well, this thing 
was trying to bug out at the time. And, uh, well, what they lacked in armament on this vessel, they made up for it in uh, gold. And it was uh, sunk, apparently, off the coast of Colombia. The Colombian army now has uh, uh, sunk their claws into this thing. They've released a video showing gold coins and other valuable items around the ship, uh, around the shipwreck. I cannot talk today. I don't know what my problem is of what's called the San Jose galleon believed to be the resting place of a large treasure. I'm not saying yet the amount. But, uh, there's a camera that went down there and you can clearly see in high definition, like, uh, gold coins laying right there. Piles of gold. Royal Navy vessel sank the Spanish flagship in 1708 during the War of Spanish Secession, but its resting place near the port of Cartagena on Colombia's coast with the Caribbean has been a mystery for more than three centuries before the Colombian Navy formally announced that they found it in 2015. Experts speculate that the ship was loaded with at least 200 tons of treasure, including high-purity gold doubloon coins, uh, as well as many silver coins and emeralds that the Spanish Empire had plundered from South America. The value? $17 billion with a B. $17 billion in gold coins, silver, and emeralds. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, there you go. There's like the gold. Just like, oh, yeah, come get me. Here's more of this stuff. Doesn't look too good there. I, know, I guess it needs to be cleaned up a little bit. All sorts of uh, uh, fine china, I guess. I guess that has value too. And on and on and on. Now it was a private, um, I think a private company that found it. And then the Colombian said, oh yeah, uh, I believe we'll be taking this. Thank you. The video revealed an enormous bounty aboard the vessel, even beyond the gold coins and ingots as they're called, including ancient cannons as well as intact Chinese porcelain pottery. Uh, Colombian government and military archaeologists are studying the inscriptions on this material to determine where it originated from. This is really cool. President Ivan Duque praised his country's navy for capturing images with a level of precision that's never been seen before and has asserted that the wreck and its contents would remain in Colombia rather than be sold as part of the salvage operation. Well, hell yeah. I mean, with $17 billion, they could probably become like a superpower, you know, uh, with, you know, an army. You could buy an army with $17 billion. You could buy an Air Force with $17 billion. The salvage rights have been subject to decades of litigation and are contested by a professional salvage company that claims to have first uncovered the wreck in 1981, as well as Colombia, Spain, and something that's called the Cara Cara Nation of Indigenous Bolivians. Well, you know, they're not going to get shit. Who cl claim the Spanish extracted the wealth from its people. It always works out that way. There's always one group of marginalized people that are like, well, I mean, shouldn't we get it? I mean, we're the, we're the Cara Cara Nation of Indigenous Bolivians. We were here first. We actually made these things. Fuck you. Shut You don't get shit. Shut up. The images shared by the Colombian army were captured with a remotely operated submersible vehicle that dived into a depth of almost a kilometer. It's a specific uh, location is considered a state secret. U.S.-based salvage company Sea Search Armada, owned by investors including the late so-and-so uh, John Ehrlichman, the White House advisor under President Nixon, convicted for his role in the Watergate scandal. Oh, there we go. Claimed to have first found the wreckage in the early 1980s. He's like, I found all this gold. Yeah, shut up. Go to jail. 
It isn't clear whether location whether the location the company identified is the same as the that uncovered by the Colombian Navy. Several legal battles over how much the company would be due if it carried out the salvage operations have now been completed, leaving Sea Search Armada with no further legal recourse. So basically, they found it, and then the Colombians said, well, thanks anyway, that's ours. We got to go feed Pablo Escobar's fucking hippos. Thanks for the gold, asshole. Incredible. I can just imagine if you're in that position of uh, whatever that private company is and you find it and you're like one guy manning the camera and you're like, holy shit, we just found it. Don't say anything. No one say a word or hopefully no one even sees it. Okay. If you're the guy in charge of whatever that company is, uh, see search Armada and you've got the robot and you're like, ah, looking at the bottom of the ocean in this spot and all of a sudden you see piles of gold like looking like smog's lair in the fucking hobbit movie and uh you're like uh-oh and you look over you look right you're like red in shawshank redemption you look left he's under the tree you're looking all around and then you like move the camera away uh, maybe do a little x marks the spot there's nothing here boss this place is dead We've, I've been looking here for hours. There is nothing here. We better move to the other side of uh, Central America and, and look there. Maybe, uh, maybe there's something there. Oh, yeah, sounds good. Pack it up. Let's go. You don't say shit. You just lay low. And then alone, uh, what you do in order to get this shit, you're going to have to secure proper equipment. So you go ahead and you rob a couple banks and get all the necessary funding and then go down there in your own James Bond sub and you take all of this shit, okay? The problem, uh, say loose lips sink ships. That's the problem. So if you tell anybody, and it, that's, that makes sense here because this is nautical excitement. Our very first episode of nautical excitement, I want to thank Rob in New Jersey for allowing this to happen. Thank you. You're wonderful. Hang on, I need water. All right. So that is that. Incredible. $17 billion. Holy shit. Hey, um, why are bras so hard to fold? I did so much folding of laundry. And uh, tell you what, first of all, doing that and then encountering your daughter's underwear is, is just hideous. Um, my wife doesn't wear uh, thong underwear, but Madison does. And I'm like, what is the point? Why do you even wear underwear? It goes right up the crack of your ass. The point of underwear is to keep your, your genitals from making your clothes disgusting. Okay? When you don't wear underwear, like the NFK... Um, there is a good chance there's going to be some type of excretion on the inside of the pants. I see it regularly. And uh, that's the point. But if you if you wear a thong that goes actually into your ass crack, what, wh- why are you even doing that? What does that even do? I don't understand. Uh, anyway... Folding that was a pain in the ass. It's like, basically, I get the thong and I just throw it in the basket. I don't even fold it. You can't fold it. It's like trying to fold fucking dental floss. And then folding a bra. That's that's another thing I had to experience this past week. What a chore. It was actually more daunting to fold all the laundry than it was to do anything else. But it's done. Diana came home. And uh, as I finished up the folding of the laundry, I, I put it all, like, I lifted it, the baskets up off the floor. And then in the laundry room, I uh, I moved everything out of the room, swept it out, vacuumed the corners, scrubbed the floor. I did all this shit. And uh, all to avoid any type of, um, you know, rebellion when the queen comes home. 
But she came home. She didn't say anything like, hey, how come this isn't done? I'm so happy about that. She went right to sleep. So now I'm in charge for the day while she rests up after having it. She, uh, there were some of the kids she talked about Hershey time, which sounds really, really sexual to me. Uh, the eighth graders, if they mess up, when you go to Hershey Park, the guy in charge of the whole thing, he says, all right, you got to sit here on this bench while all the other kids do fun stuff. You have accumulated this much Hershey time because of your horrible behavior. And then the kid has to sit there at the park and wait it out. So depending on how big of an asshole you are, that's how long your Hershey time is. I'm like, I love that. That is, that is just awesome. So there were a few kids that got Hershey time. Okay. This show is available on Patreon. I I take it back. I do a second show on Patreon each and every day. For your five or ten dollar donation to the Eric Zane Show podcast Vet Bill Fund, I will give you more podcasting each and every day. I usually go between thirty and forty minutes, sometimes more, every day when this show is done. There is always plenty more to talk about on the Patreon bonus podcast. That's just the start of it. I've got the Patreon bonus. I've got Smarter Than a Former Drug Dealer trivia, which we featured just the other day. Um, and then, of course, there is the Insane Asylum, which I have to uh, uh, make and publish today. I've got the Lost Zane recordings twice a week and the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast tonight. Tonight's the night. Gonna be all right. I've got a video that I have to share with Ben and all of you. That Sam the Jew sent me. Oh my God. It is uh, an amazing Olympic moment. Thank you, Sam the Jew, for sending that along. He sent it, and then somehow my phone butt dialed him right after he sent it. I think the notification popped up. It said, Sam the Jew sent you a video, and then I, I must have like somehow enabled the call feature. And then I hear, I'm like, what's going on? I pick it up and Sam, the Jew is picking it up at work. And I go, Hey, what's up? He goes, yeah, you called me. I go, I did. He goes, yeah, I go. And he's like smiling. I go, he goes, I sent you a video. I go, Oh yeah. Uh, okay. He goes, yeah, that's what I thought you were calling. I thought you were calling to yell at me. I said, no, I haven't seen it. This is a complete butt dial. And he goes, Oh, Okay. I hung up and I saw the video. I'm not mad. I think it's I think it's spectacular. It is an Olympic feat of strength. And he also captioned it with something that I cannot share with you right now. I can I have to share it with Ben. And you when we do the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast tonight at seven PM. In fact, I uh, reached out to Ben. Where is it? Jesus, I hate when I do this. You down for podcasting Thursday? I am. Queef it up, he says. We will. We will do that. We will queef it up. If you are on Patreon and you want to be part of the live audience, because I connected with Zoom and I'm actually looking at your faces. Uh, your face. Send me an email. Say, hey, I want to be in on it. But you got to be on Patreon, okay? So send. let me know. I, I think I have everybody included on the list. But um, if you feel like you aren't getting a uh, notification, let me know and I'll take care of it. The open and the live stream of this podcast. Brought to you this time around by my friends at My Policy Shop Insurance. Buyinsurancehere.com. Frank the Tank Fuss. 616-914-4070. If you are without health insurance right now because you're thinking, ah, well, I I just can't afford it. um, That is not the case. You can afford it. You just need to have the right guidance. 
Frank's guidance is free. So there's one of two ways you can reach out to him. Three, actually. You can call or text 616-914-4070 or go to the website buyinsurancehere.com. Um, he can help you with all sorts of different types of insurance, but I like to stress uh, health care because a lot of people who either are not offered insurance by their employer, maybe they're between jobs, or they're self-employed. You might be thinking, I, I just can't afford it or whatever. No, you can. Healthcare.gov is a terrific thing. Despite the usual shitheads that exist in the world suggesting otherwise. But uh, I've been utilizing it for years and it's awesome. I can't say enough about it. Call Frank. He'll help you every step of the way. Uh, Berlin Speedway, Berlin Raceway, I should say, is uh, doing the uh, Money in the Bank race tonight. And then they've got racing on Saturday as well for 12 bucks a ticket. I am going to post today that if you want to go to the races, uh, just like the status and you'll be in the running and I'll announce the winner tomorrow. Otherwise, buy tickets online. Just 12 bucks a ticket for Saturday's race. Berlin Raceway dot com so much to offer there hot dogs just three bucks beers cold beers are five bucks that's about uh three times less than you'll get at any other venue in and around west michigan you can bring in a cooler with all the snacks that you can eat and all your soft drinks but they cannot be in glass bottles you cannot bring in any alcohol you got to buy that on site the parking's free 15 and under get in free i mean seriously uh you just can't beat it. They got a wonderful bar there that they just opened up. Looking good at Berlin Raceway. Weather is going to be awesome for Saturday's races at Berlin. BerlinRaceway.com. Thank you to the Kent County Health Department. AccessKent.com slash health. If you need information on immunizations, which are free if you qualify. So, you know, if you're like, oh, God, uh, for whatever reason, you can't get your kids immunized, whether there's a health care issue or something. The one thing that you cannot miss is the immunizations. Okay, measles, mumps, rubella, whooping cough, pert- uh, pertussis, uh, meningitis. Uh, what's the one? The There's a vaccine that uh, keeps your kids from getting cervical cancer. Gardasil, is that it? Terrific vaccine. You must do these things. Get your kids vaccinated. Unless if you are an idiot, if you are an idiot, ignore what I'm saying and go about your miserable life. Otherwise, get your kids immunized unless if you are a total asshole. Accesskent.com slash health. Also information there on the WIC program. You should take advantage of that if you're struggling to feed the family. Okay, it's uh, meant to be a stopgap. Don't get too comfortable there. Uh, but you can take advantage of the WIC program. Also, it is uh, HIV Awareness Month, the month of June. If um, this is something that you might think that you need to be tested for, click on Personal Health Services, and all of that is free, and they can take care of everything for you at the Kent County Health Department. Okay, further proof that I'm really, really old in like a minute and a half because it's intermission time and I got to go tinkle. So stay right there. I'll be back.
Hey, Dennis G is in the house. I wonder if he's fishing again for bluegill. Dan Frazier here. DRP 7255. Okay. Erica underscore FNBR. What a catchy name. Farming girl. Hello. I see Stevie is here. Joe Martinez is here. Joe, you're going to love this. Later on in the show, I'm going to be featuring Joe Biden on the Jimmy Kimmel show. Did you hear about this one? He did an interview with Jimmy Kimmel, and we're going to get into it. I cannot wait for you to hear that. I see Sam the Jew, Stephen Hyde, Sir Bob of Oliver, Tyler K. Oh, my God. It's trigger time with Rick from TC Paintball. I'm telling you, that's got to be the title of your of your time tomorrow, Rick. Your new regular feature, Trigger Time with Rick. It's the it's the fun alliteration of saying Trigger Time. All right. I'm guessing you won't like that. Uh, waiting on Kyle to get in here. He's usually checking in at about this time. Um, before we get to that, though, I have, um, as I've aged, and I that's the only thing I chalk this up to, or maybe I just... Don't like loud noises. Loud noises! Um, People who own these obnoxiously large, incredibly expensive, zero turn radius or zero radiance turn, how do you say it? Zero turn radius lawnmowers. (sighs) The volume of these things. I mean, if if my neighbor had an Osprey aircraft in his backyard, it would be not nearly as loud as the zero turn radius mower. And when he starts the motor up, just the motor, and he hasn't engaged the blades yet, it's not that bad. But then as soon as he, you know, engages the blades, holy shit. It is, it just cuts right to my core. It's so loud. I hate those things. Uh, Conversely, when I'm walking, and then he's got like ear protection on. It's so loud, he's wearing ear protection. And, oh, God, it just shuts everything down to my soul. And if I'm walking the dogs and someone's got one of those things, even just a simple John Deere tractor. Oh, you fucking assholes. If I were president, I would make an executive order that those are illegal, and you must either have an old school push mower or one of those electric ones. That is the only acceptable thing you can do because noise pollution uh, is a real problem. You're just destroying the serenity of the neighborhood. I would, I would eliminate those uh, trucks with loud exhaust or car, you know, all you dumbass hillbilly MAGA shitheads with your loud trucks, all of you, it'd be out. Uh, and, and Harley Davidson motorcycles would be banned. That would be my first executive order. All of those things, you would not be allowed to own those. Absolutely ridiculous. Never before has there been an indicator that the owner of any of those devices has a small cock, in my opinion. Uh, we're going to say hello to our uh, longtime friend, Kyle from Dumpster Divers. Hi, Kyle. How are you, buddy? I see you there. Uh, do you do you do you have your mic? No. So here we got some controversy going on at uh, the office of uh, Dumpster Divers. So the internet wasn't working really good. Uh, uh-huh. Kept like cutting in and out. Uh-huh. Um, 
and we were having issues. Yeah. So then I had this like secret plan of like, so we wouldn't have problems on the show where I was like going to bring this other thing and then I was going to get everything working. So it'd be good. Yeah. And then I got here today and then I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reset my computer. So I reset the computer and now the internet works. So it, it was fucking for no reason. <laughs> so, but you're, you're all ready to go like this. It sounds fine. Seriously. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's less quality. I'm, I'm a class B citizen today, but that's all right. Well, welcome to you. Uh, I understand. I mean, as you know, uh, I'm going to see you on Monday of next week. We're bringing you a dumpy, baby. Is it you or is one of the other one of the, is Emilio coming or is it you or what's the other? What, what's the new guy's name? Maybe, uh, maybe we'll have Tony bring it out to you. and He can beat your ass. Well, I didn't say anything bad about Tony. <laughs> no, no, I'm just messing. No, Tony's actually, he's like one of the nicest people alive. Actually. He's like, uh, almost too nice. Oh, yeah. You might have to toughen them. All right. A word for FitBod, which is an app that is going to help you get in shape, stay in shape, help you to live longer, avoid injury, be more durable, and just overall improve your quality of life and your health. Believe me, I know what it's like to start and stop exercise programs. The FitBod app, though, is helping me stay motivated. There's no question that my overall strength being improved because of the FitBod app is going to help me destroy Mike Ball in the Grand Rapids Half Marathon coming up in October. At the end of this, I'm going to tell you how to take advantage of the FitBod app. After you download the FitBot app and you put your information about your age, your weight, your fitness goals, things like that, it's going to tailor specific workouts for each of your body parts for each days of the week. It's a fantastic way to track what you're doing and stay on top of it and keep you motivated. That's what I love so much about this. Basically, they take the guesswork out of what you're supposed to be doing. Gone are the days when you just march into the gym and start slinging around weights and hope that something works out. What's going to happen to you there is you're going to lose motivation because you're not going to see any results or worse you're going to get hurt tapping into the FitBot app is going to help you achieve your goals and trust me after you start seeing the results of all the hard work you're putting in you're going to stay motivated that's the key and with FitBot guiding you every step of the way that's going to happen sooner rather than later it's time to quit talking and finally start doing something hey i'm right there with you i've eaten myself out of shape and i'd like to get back into shape the FitBot app is going to help me do that let's get motivated and do it together you can build your fitness habit and become a better version of yourself with FitBot. and how about this you get 25 percent off your subscription or try out the app for free when you sign up now at fitbod.me slash Zane. So let me say that all again, okay? You go to fitbod.me slash Zane, and you can try the app for free. You can also get 25% off of your subscription when you do that. fitbod.me slash Zane. 25% off when you sign up today at fitbod.me slash Zane. Zane. Progressive presents Forest Metaphors about bundling your home and auto. In sports, three goals is a hat trick. And when you bundle your home and auto with Progressive, you get a hat trick of great savings and round the clock protection. So you might be thinking, wait, that's two things. A hat trick is three. But in this metaphor, great savings counts as two goals and so does round the clock protection. So it's like four goals and that's more than three. It's basic math. Forced Metaphors, presented by Progressive. Bundle and protect today. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discount not available in all states or situations. Up a little bit. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. With thick, thick skin at the old dumpies. Sure, maybe drop some racist jokes. See if he likes those. <laughs> the funny thing is, we actually do all the time. and he, he just laughs his ass off. Really? Yeah, be careful. If you drop a racist joke on someone, one day they might take it poorly, and then you're going to lose the company. Well, no, 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 no. Tony starts it. That's, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so he might make a white people joke. Oh yeah, I mean, there's, there's all over this company. There's just uh, jokes of poor taste that we just allow to happen. So you don't like drop the N word, though, do you? Uh, it's say no, no say no, uh, no. <laughs> but Tony does. Oh. Not, I don't know. Hey, if Tony I'm does, not get anybody hey, in trouble. hey, if Tony does, it's okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, don't get us into that whole conversation. We're all going to be in trouble. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, buddy. Well, it's been a week um, since we last spoke. I know we had a wonderful time last time, but uh, here we go again. What's on your mind, Kyle, from Dumpster Divers? Dude, I just got tons of – I am I was struggling right before I signed in because, like I said, I reset my computer, and now I can't – uh, I can't sign into nothing anymore. So now I gotta, I gotta. After I get off of here, I gotta do this thing where I start figuring out my passwords and stuff. I can't get into Twitch now, so I can't even see you. So, so you, just it's just a shit show for you. Everything about it is a shit show. Oh yeah, shit show for sure, dude. Okay, well, uh, we're talking. I'm talking about a number of things here. Um, I've uh, had Diana has been uh, uh, gone for extended time. She has returned. You ever have that happen where Blue leaves you for days on end? No, Blue's, Blue's obsessed with me, so we're always together. <laughs> okay, so how long, what's the amount of time you've been married? Ten years? Five years? One one month? Um, one month? Yeah, like one month, remember? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long have you been together, though? Um, So, like, well, what month is it right now? Like, almost... Like two, like, two and a half years. But again, we've known each other since we were, like, eight. Right, so. right. Yeah, well, that's what's happening here. She just returned home, and I'm so grateful. It's, you know, when she's gone, it's what do they say? Absence makes the heart heart grow fond. You know? Oh yeah, for sure. So we're experiencing that around the household. What? Uh, well, where was she? What was she doing? Dude, check this out. She was hanging out with three busloads of eighth graders, uh, chaperoning for a trip to the East Coast. Oh, that sucks. I think if I had done that, there would be dead children by the time it's all. Oh, for sure, you'd you'd be pulling a a Chris Farley, um, yeah, a la Billy Madison. Right, right. It would be like uh, an Armenian gremlin open fire on a bus full of kids. (laughs) This is a bad time to talk about this. There's everything is terrible in the world right now. Oh yeah, that's yeah. There's a lot of people get a lot of people getting shot as as far as that we know. Yeah, it's been it's been rough, no question. So, are you telling me that of all the things that you plan on talking about, you're like in the dark on them? Wait, in the dark on what? So you you said you're having issues with your computer. Does that mean that anything that you had planned on bringing bringing up on oh, this no, portion? No, no, no. I, I got issues. I mean, I got things galore, Eric. And I, I could talk for hours. Dude. That's what when I do. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you've seen any of my episodes on the Chibian show, but. It's mostly just like I write down a couple keywords and then I just go, dude. So I can I can just go regardless. The last show you were at, uh, weren't you on location somewhere? Yeah, I, I, I saw. Actually, let me tell you about that, Eric Zane, because it was pretty fucking funny, actually. So we went. We were at my buddy Cliff's house because now now my buddy Cliff likes coming on the show. Because here's what happens, right? So we started. I started the show. Um, you know, I, I did like one episode. Maybe I was like Cliff because he's, he's my best friend, and we always like we're just pretty funny together most of the time. But um, he, I was like, you gotta come on the show. Like we can like co-host it together, maybe or whatever. And he was like, no, like I'm too nervous. He was like, you know, your show is not popular. I don't really want to do that. Like, <laughs> you know. So it was just shitting all over me, right? Which is fine. And then, um, then I got him when we did the NFL draft show, we ended up calling him on the phone and, um, he ended up listening to it later and then he got like a little hooked. And then, um, we did one show, not this past weekend, but the weekend before that. And, uh, then he was hooked after that. He, he called me the next day. He's like, Hey, when you can, when you can you come over next so we can do the champion show. So anyways, so he's, he wants to be in it now. Right. So we went over to his house and, um, they told me that the internet is like fiber optic or whatever, but I'm pretty sure it's DSL, right? So um, it was just not working right. And I was like, dude, I think we're going to have like streaming issues, you know? So anyways, they brought, we switched computers because theirs was like directly connected to the internet, right? And so we switched computers, but it was an Apple and my fucking soundboard thing like doesn't connect to Apple, you know what I mean? And so then I had to connect it to, a, I, I think it's called a dongle. You know what I mean? Like it connects okay. um, regular shit to Apple shit. Like, yeah, yeah, okay. Like a transponder yeah. or whatever you want. Apple, Apple shit to regular shit is exactly how they describe it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I plugged the soundboard in. Everything was good to go. So the soundboard picked up the mics, 
but it did not pick up the effects, right? So the whole fucking time that I think we're doing like devil voice and all the effects and shit, when you listen to the show, it just sounds regular. So but we think we think we're in devil because coming through the headphones, it still sounded like devil voice. But then when it turned into a right, show, like right. it was coming through to everybody else, it didn't sound. So I'm like doing like devil voice jokes, and I just fucking sound like me, dude. So it was it was stupid. So you're 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 thinking it's gonna sound like devil voice. Yeah. And in fact it's and, it's just it's, it's just you going devil voice. Yeah, basically. And I did this so um my uncle Jeff who lives down in either I think Florida now, but him and his his wife uh my aunt Lisa, they they started watching so they'll sign on to the live streams and chat with yes. stuff. And my uncle Jeff who's who's real goofy said he loved my segment where I did devil voice karaoke. And so then like they were on, so I was like, "Oh, I'll just I'll start karaoke." And I ended up doing a little bit of Lionel Richie all night long, <laughs> or whatever. And so I think I'm in devil voice, but no, dude, it's just fucking me, dude. And so I'm, I I didn't even listen to that part yet because I'm too nervous. That I'm yeah. Gonna sound like a oh movie. yeah, you know, if I I could, uh, there've been so many times in this show where there's been technical issues that made me look and feel like the biggest asshole on the planet. It is yeah, it man. is a regular thing. So, well, that's, that's good. I mean, you're slowly but surely putting the pieces together in about 50, 50,000 years, you'll be able to make money doing this. I know, dude. I'm up to, uh, I think I'm up to like 25 downloads now. Oh, all right. Um, yeah. And I don't know how, okay. So tell me the difference. What's the difference between downloads and listens? Cause like a download is like they download it off of like Spotify or whatever to listen to later. Right. I think so. I mean, that's, I kind of just count those each as one, you know? Okay. Yeah. Cause I didn't know. Cause I have, uh, on the, what do you call it? Like the red circle thing. I, and I scroll out of the, bo- all the way to the bottom, there's like dashboards for each individual thing. Right. But I haven't, um, signed, I haven't signed in to that yet. So I don't know if it counts listens or not. Well, I mean, if they listen, there's like, cause on Spotify, like I've listened to myself on Spotify but it doesn't show up anywhere. So I don't know what's the difference. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta take a look at that. Maybe I can help you with that. <laughs> I, 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 I can't, I can't picture it. I have to go and see it, but all right. So when do you, when do you do your show again? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm pr- probably on Saturday. Cause we'll probably Saturday's my birthday. So we'll probably end up going over to hang out with uh, Cliff and Nicole again, and he'll probably be like, "Bring, bring your stuff, dude." So okay, so how are you even thirty? I'm I'm gonna be at thirty three, dude. Holy shit! Well, happy birthday to you. Well, thanks. Yeah, I um. So this is actually one of the things I was gonna talk about. Uh, so l- let me tell you the disaster. It's like well, it wasn't a disaster, but it tur- it was a kind of a disaster, dude. Um. Yesterday, because uh, Saturday, <laughs> I'm way out of order here. Saturday, we're going to go to the fucking hibachi place um, with, like, my family and, like, my sister and stuff to, like, celebrate my birthday. But Blue's family, they're going to be busy or doing some other shit that day. So we celebrated with them yesterday, right? And we went over to their house, and Sam's frick, Blue, uh, her grandma made a... Uh, like some rib chips. She made a bunch of a good stuff for dinner, right? So go over there, eat the dinner, and then they had like a little cake. So we're like, first of all, Blue's like, oh, let's light the candles and sing you a song. And I'm like, no, dude. Like, I'm fucking going to be 33, dude. I don't want to do that. Yeah, and, come on. Right? No, no, you should absolutely do that. That's half the fun, you dumb dick. What do you mean no, no birthday cake? No, 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 Eric Zane, tell me one time that you had fun listening to people sing you happy birthday. Tell me one time. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> they have fun. No, I, I'm convinced it's like a, it's like a secret. There's some sort of secret, like weird energy thing there. Cause the people singing it don't have any fun and the people getting it sang to don't have any fun. So I don't know why it still happens. Ah, it's a tradition and people do love it. You're just being a cock. That's what you're doing. Yeah, I might be. But, um, so anyways, um, I was like, nah, I don't want to do it. And then blue was like, come on, we'll do it. And, um, her niece was there. And also my niece was there cause they were having a little sleepover last night. So 
then she was like come on do it for the kids and yeah. like, in my head i'm like i'm like it's my birthday dude fuck the kids but um <laughs> <laughs> anyways so we did it anyway so then um they wanted a picture with uh the chibians prince uh, jameson on my lap like in front of the in front of the cake with the candles on and stuff and like take a picture and we did get some cute pictures um but this is where the disaster struck and this is where um i became a shitty dad so the candles were lit they're singing or whatever they went all the way to 33 on like the how old are you now part which took way too long but um <laughs> so then they're like blow out the candles right so i was gonna blow out the candles and i see jameson start reaching for the candles right so i gotta lean back i'm like can't do it you know what i mean because i don't want him to burn himself so then um my brain enters uh mental retardation mode <laughs> and instead of me reaching down and like grabbing his hands and holding his hands my brain goes Oh, here's what you do. Just lean in really freaking quick and blow him out before he even realizes what's going on. So I lean in really quick to do that. And he, of course, reaches and like kind of like barely grazes the, the candles. And so he starts crying. Oh, <laughs> dude. I got I, and then I got all upset with myself because I was stupid and couldn't prevent that. Oh, yeah, you so, should have. You should have your child taken from you. I know. <laughs> I know, dude. CPS is going to be listening. You know there's somebody from CPS that listens to Way this to show. go. Like, we're fucking headed out there, dude. <laughs> oh, fuck. So was it just... Uh, so, I mean, burns are a bitch, especially if it's a kid, because they cry for like five years afterwards. Yeah. So, Jameson, he's got he's got my blood in him, so his pain tolerance is at like an all-time high for humans. Oh, okay. So, he, he did. It was hot, obviously, so he was like scared slash it hurt a little bit. But then he was fine after that. So it was, it was actually, it worked out really good. But the funny part of the story is that um, I'm a dude. And like, although I try to be progressive and like emotionally sound, I'm still got like toxic masculinity in me. So I was upset with myself for not being able to prevent that like an idiot. So then of course I took my anger out on everybody else. Oh, yes. Tell me, tell me. Yes. So, um, so he burns his fingers and he's crying or whatever. And like blues, like she like looks over and I'm like trying to like help her. Whatever. And, like, of course, like my first reaction isn't to just be cool about it. I go, I didn't even want to do the damn candles anyway. Oh, yes. So, I flip out on everybody. And, um, and we actually have uh so blue. I don't know if you, I don't, I don't know if you have an iPhone, but like, I don't do iPhones cause I'm not stupid and I don't want to pay a thousand dollars for a phone. <laughs> um, so apparently iPhones do this thing where you can take a picture and then it does like three seconds or five seconds of yep. the picture. Mm -hmm. Um, so live, I call it, I guess it's called live or whatever. So anyways, blue's got like a perfect picture of that exact time where like he touched it. So then, um, so you see him like try, like touching it and like crying or whatever. But like when you press the live version, you see him like touch it and start crying, and you see me like look or whatever. And then the very end of the live version of me of me going, God! Oh <laughs> yes! So it's there oh, forever. I got all pissed, and it's, then oh like, man, all like, oh, mad about it because I didn't want to do it anyways, and like. Then I felt really bad about being an asshole dude. And hey. then I was like really chill after that and was like, yeah, it, it, I was just upset. And anyways, but yeah, no, I totally this is good. This is good for my, my shortcoming. <laughs> okay. This is excellent. This is excellent. First of all, it's, it's good that it happened. Okay. It's yeah. good. It's good that the child was hurt. Okay. <laughs> the next thing is it's good that you flipped out and, <laughs> and because now it's magical and then the, the next part is you having the uh, wherewithal to admit how stupid you you were in that in that moment. This is all part of your development, as we all know. Uh, a man's brain doesn't completely become uh, in working order at peak efficiency till the time he's about seventy-one years old. So this is <laughs> this is all part of your development. We are the worst. Men are the worst. For sure, dude. 
And uh, yeah, it was on it was on display last night, dude. And like, but it was kind of funny though, because I think everybody got it, you know, because like nobody was like yelling at me, like chill out, like shut up, like everybody. Oh, was they like, know. Yeah, they know. Yeah, you're so you're. I, I, fuck, I know. And then like I was talking to Blue. I was like, yeah. I was like, I just was so annoyed with myself that like, right. like how did I not think? Just grab his arm so he doesn't do it. No, but, you know that you did the right thing, and that is lash out. You have to laugh. You, 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 I am so proud of you and so glad that you did that. That is Dude, sometimes, sometimes you just got to do a little lash skis. Yep. You do. You do. And, and those people need to be put on notice that, uh, they're dealing with a lunatic. And so that's, that's, yeah. that's how it works. Little, little loony, little loony tune. No big deal. I love that story so much. <laughs> Well, yeah, it, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay as long as you realize that you fucked up and then everybody's going to forgive you because they're they're human beings. So, eh, whatever. Oh, for sure. Oh, it's like you're a, you're like a, a like a, a son I never had. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, but the funny like the, like I said afterwards, Jameson was totally fucking chill. I was predicting like he was going to be a dick all night, you know what I mean? Like my yeah. fucking hand, you know? Right. But he um he was chill. I gave, I gave him a little ice cube and he was holding that for a minute and we cleaned it out and whatnot. But then, yeah, he was just chill all night. It didn't like blister or anything, did it? Um, there was like a small, I think like one part of his index finger blistered. Oh, but, so um, it's just a second degree burn. No big deal. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, dude, I know. But here's the secret. The secret part is like, um, even though you said like, you were joking. You're like, it's a good thing that the child got hurt. Like I'm a big believer in like fucking it's got to happen, dude. Kids got to hurt hey, themselves to learn. You touch, know what I mean? so, touch the stove, get burned. He's not going to do that again. I know. Yeah, dude. So it <laughs> shit happens, you know, it does. And you shouldn't beat yourself up over it, but you should always lash out. Yeah. Oh, and I, yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Uh, what else do you have for us, Kyle? Um, well, I got to ask you this question, Eric Zane. I don't know how, I don't know how your, you interact with your Eric Zane fan page or whatnot, but I totally, I totally tagged you, I think in, um, a post like, I just, I just post like random funny memes on the Chibian show page that I think are funny. And there was one about like the, a joke about how glue was f formulated. So I brought us back to the, the James Cromwell discussion that we had. I don't know if you saw that, but it cracked me the fuck up, dude. Wait a minute. Say it again. I, I tagged you. Well, I, the Eric Zane fan page, I think. Right, 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 right. Yep. I would see that. Well, yeah. With a meme about how glue was invented and then it brought, I did it because we were talking about fucking James Cromwell that one time. Right, right. The uh, guy from Bay, Babe, Pig in the City. Yeah, Babe, Pig in the City. Um, so, anyways, check out just check out that meme sometime. It fucking cracked me up. And I, I just I tagged you in it because I was like, yeah, it just brought me back to fucking uh, James Cromies, dude. Yeah, I, I, I can't see it. And, um, yes, yeah, so I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So, this is... Uh... This is a terrible thing to bring up. So yeah. So my bad. <laughs> anyway, look it up later. Oh, I do want to say though, I was fucking, what was I doing? I did something. Either I gave a description. What did I do? I was doing something about, I think I was either like rating you or like referring you or something or giving you a shout out maybe on something to get, try to get people to like go to your page and like it and stuff. Okay. And I fucking put on there some, I just, I go, the guy zipper merges. That's, that's all I put on there. Oh, well that's a good thing. And you wouldn't believe the zipper merge I did the other day. <laughs> Tell me, dude. So on this stretch of road, 196 westbound, it, oh, uh, yeah. it's a classic. It's just, it's a quick merge over. And then you have maybe a hundred yards over a bridge and then it widens back out. And it's, yep. it's backed up one mile. Oh yeah. Okay. I, I've, whenever I route, uh, my drivers right now, dude, I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I don't send anybody on no. the fucking road. Right now. So no way. I see everyone getting over 
and I look, I, I kind of uh, 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 needle out there into the left lane because they're merging right, and I see it's clear sailing. So I punch it. And yeah. and not only do I punch it, I get closer to the middle, to the uh, dotted center line that divides both lanes going that direction. So uh-huh. what that does is that gives the illusion that I'm crazy. So I'm <laughs> not only going fast, fast but i'm close to them so if if uh asshole uh vigilante is going to pull out into the lane to slow me down he's got to be less likely to do it because i'm coming on strong and it worked like a fucking (laughs) charm because then you're going fast so at the uh right where the zipper is at the merge point they're going faster so you just very quickly sneak up on a match speed and boom, right in. And man, people are honking at me, middle fingers, flashing their lights. I'm like, fuck you. I did it right, you assholes. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what? Um, I'm, I've, I've, I meant to talk about this like two weeks ago, maybe. So I'm glad that this just reminded me of it. Have you fucking seen this disaster that's going on on 131 North near the ballpark? No. Dude, get this. So I don't know what the fuck's going on up there, right? I think that they're trying to um, maybe widen that, uh, like that part of 131 to three lanes maybe or something. Like it's in their plans maybe. I don't know. I didn't do any research because I don't got fucking time for that. But so here's what they did, right? Usually, like if you're driving north right now, we're 96, uh, you know, if you're going on 96 East and you do like the little loop around right, right, right. 131 North, it's got like that ridiculously short on ramp. Right. And it's also, you got the ballpark right after that. So, you know, usually like rush hour or anytime it's a Friday, you're fucked right there. Like you're going to be in a traffic jam. So I think their solution is to fucking widen it to, and make the on ramp from 96, like just a lane. So you don't have to get over and slow everybody down. Right. But Here's what these fuckers did, right? You're driving up there and they got this sign posted like way before you even get to 96 that says traffic shift ahead, right? So the 10% of people who aren't just looking at their phone right now (laughs) at that point, they see the sign, but most people aren't seeing the sign. And then it does the traffic shift where it it basically, the left lane kind of goes onto the shoulder which gives you one lane, two yep. lanes, three lanes, right. and then the, the on-ramp lane yep. stays a lane or whatever. But so you got all these extra lanes. So you're like, fuck yeah, dude, traffic's going to be good. But then here's what the fuckers did, right? You keep going and then down to close to where the West River Drive exit is. Then they just decide, oh, yeah, this fucking extra lane that we opened up, we're just going to close it down <laughs> for no fucking reason. So you got all these people cruising and then there's like, Hey, this magical lane that we gave you for no reason. Now it's going to be done. And you just can't be doing that to the general public. You know what I mean? You can't be doing that to people who don't know how to drive, dude. So it's, you think it's going to be magical, but it just causes more traffic jams. <laughs> so I don't fucking get it. dude. I guess is my point. Like, you, you think it's great, and then you get up there, and then you got, like, some lady up there going, oh, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. Like- I'm, I'm the lady. I'm the lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. So if you're going north anytime soon, check it out, because you're going to be looking at it going, I don't fucking get it, dude. Yeah. Why would you open up the lane and then close it down, like, five football fields later? I don't, I don't know. Kyle, I want you to uh, have a great weekend. I'm going to see uh, you or somebody from Dumpster Divers on Monday. Again, as always, when people want to reach out to you, dumpsterdiversllc.com. They can order it online or just give you a call. Phone number's there, whatever. You'll take care of them. Yep. Give us a call. Give us some dollar bills. Um, check out the fucking Chibian show and like the page and all that shit. All yeah, right. You know, just do your thing. I, will, yeah. I, I said last time I was going to link it up in the show notes, and I didn't because I suck. But uh, I'll do it. I'll I'll do it for sure today. Yeah, link it up, dude. All right, have a good one. All right, love you guys, deuces. All right, deuces. <laughs> if I say it, I just sound like an asshole. Kyle from Dumpster Divers. Speaking of driving, um, being that gas is so high, I really 
really go slow. If it's a 45 mile an hour zone, I'll do 38. But I'm in the, the right lane. There, and I won't do that if it's a one lane deal and there's someone behind me. I don't want to be that guy. Then I'll do the speed limit. I won't go over it, though. I'm trying to uh, conserve fuel as much as possible. But if it's two lanes going one direction, I'll stay in the right and I'll do 37, 38, and a 45. Now, with the pig truck embellisher with the 8,000 cubic inch motor, uh, that is the difference between 17 miles a gallon and, I don't know, 10. God, what a beast. So I don't drive that hardly at all. I tried to drive Diana's car, which, at last check, the current uh, tank of gas is averaging 47.6 miles a gallon. Holy shit. You can, for extended time, if you keep it slow, charge the battery and use the battery at the same time. So basically, no fuel. It goes up to 100 miles per gallon. It's like for that period of time, that mile or so that you're traveling, it's that high. So if you keep it slow and stay off the gas, you'll get there in a, a shorter or a longer amount of time, no doubt. But, you know. I am, that's called hyper -miling. And yesterday, um, I was doing just that. And one of the things that I've noticed about uh, behavior in driving since I'm going so slow is uh, everyone else is an asshole. And super specifically, uh, big pickup truck drivers, like the kind of people who drive the truck that I drive when I can't drive Diana's hybrid, except they've got all the aftermarket shit on it to indicate that their cocks are small. And um, so where I am is about tire level. Where I'm, I'm seated in the car, they, they just blow by me. So if they get behind me, they realize that I'm driving that slow, and then they'll pass me. So that's fine. I don't care. Um, I'm not trying to be a dick. I just am trying to conserve fuel. But they're, they're, they're going to rip by me. And I don't, I mean, it's not like they're doing anything uh ridiculous or rude they're just passing me which is what they're supposed to do so i don't have a problem with any of that what i do have a problem with is i have a problem when people tailgate me and yesterday that was the case i was doing my 37 38 and a 45 in the right hand lane you could very easily pass me but the guy behind me he's not gonna pass me because he's gonna have to make a right hand turn in about a quarter mile so rather than just, ah, uh, I'll just wait this 15 seconds and then make my right-hand turn onto my side street, this fucking uh, redneck piece of shit gets right, he's drafting. He's like, uh, you know, uh, 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 what do you call it? Daytona International Speedway, that type of close. And I'm just, I've actually got the cruise control on 37 miles an hour. Uh, watching my fuel economy go up and i'm not doing anything i'm not touching the brake i don't want to brake check him or any of that shit but what a that's i'm surrounded in this county by all of these assholes i hate these people okay um so this uh trump supporter is right on my ass and um then he puts on his blinker to turn he has He's like, oh, you know, I'm going to get right on your ass, but I'm still going to turn on my blinker for the guy behind me. What a cock. And then as he's making his turn, he, he hits the brights on me. Yeah, fuck you. And I'm just driving. I'm just doing my thing. You know, I'm sorry, dude. It's $5 and 17 cents a gallon. Okay. If you didn't drive like the cocksucker that you are, you wouldn't be poor. You wouldn't be as poor. What an asshole. All right, I'm way behind. I got to catch up on some sponsors. 
First of all, if you want to buy an Eric Zane Show podcast t-shirt, I've got a number of styles available at ericzaneshow.com. Click merch and off you go. Got an IT company sponsoring the show, Blue Frost IT. The managed IT service provider for the Eric Zane Show podcast. Now, if you are in West Michigan and you're looking to upgrade the tech in your workplace, uh, you might be like, well, where do I begin? That's a great question. And you go to Blue Frost IT. Alan will visit you. He's going to talk to you and ask you questions about your business. You're going to answer them. He's going to formulate what would make your business um, kick ass from a technological standpoint. And he's going to recommend that you purchase these things. You then do that. He helps you with that. And then he's going to set it all up for you. That is called project slash contract work. Then he's going to become your managed IT service provider to make sure that that equipment is running as it should all the time. Basically, that uh, the managed IT work is like an insurance policy so that if you ever get in the weeds for whatever reason, you know, some dumbass employee clicks on the link that is like, you know, some type of viral infection. You dumbass. Don't click on it if it says it's from with, uh, out of the company. Uh I work for iHeart, you know, um, in my spare time. And uh, they got this engineer who is an absolute Nazi. And he is constantly emailing, do not do this. Do not click on this. It's like, I just don't open any emails. I don't want to be the dickhead who shuts down iHeart. So I'm just not opening anything. All right. Thank you, Blue Frost IT. We got comedy this weekend. Uh, D. Ray Davis and Donnell Rawlings. What is it called? Chocolate Time Comedy Show again? Chocolate Factory Comedy Show. I was close. Chocolate Factory Comedy Show presenting D. Ray Davis and Donnell Rawlings. The show happens in Muskegon at the Froenthal Center. Get tickets for this show right at fullhousecomedy.com. Big Dick Donnie is freaking out. So if you're looking for something fun to do, buy these tickets for the Saturday, June 11th show, 8 p.m. Froenthal Center, and you will not be disappointed, and you'll make it so that Don isn't freaking out so much. There's a nervous, nervous Nelly, as they say, about ticket sales on that one. Thank you to Full House Comedy. All right, one more. Uh, Mario Flores, Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage, 231-332-6505. Love them so much. If you are in the market for a mortgage, uh, reach out to Mario. Whether your credit is fantastic, this will be an uh, easy process. Or if uh, there's a couple of, uh, couple red flags that come up on you, uh, he can do his best to make sure that uh, you get the deal done. Not all mortgage people are created equal. Mario wants anyone, no matter if your credit stinks or if your credit is awesome, 231-332-6505. He wants to hear from you. Please mention my name. All right. Hang on. Let's get to this. Joe Biden on Jimmy Kimmel. I don't know if I'm going to get through the whole thing here. It's quite long. Uh, But Biden appeared, agreed to appear on the Kimmel show. I fucking love Jimmy Kimmel. He is absolutely my favorite. And uh, as you all know, Joe Biden is the president of the United States. So this is a pretty big get. Some of you are like, No, he's not. He's not the president of the United States. It's Kamala Harris. I've said that. Well, let's hear how Joe Biden did. A very special guest tonight is to aviator sunglasses what Tom Cruise is to aviator sunglasses. I'm (laughs) proud to say I voted for him dozens of times. He is the reason we all got a cavity search tonight. Please welcome the 46th president of the United States, Joe Biden. 
Okay, pause. The idea that he takes the mask off. At this stage of the game, do we really need to do that? Do we really need to take the mask off? So he's standing there behind the curtain and he's he's like, all right, the first thing I need to do is take my mask off to show. I, mean, I get it. I get it. I, I, I really don't have a problem with that. It's just, yeah, I don't have a problem with it, but it's fucking stupid at this point of the game. Because I don't think anybody gives a shit. Cavity search tonight. Please welcome the 46th president of the United States, Joe Biden. I mean, think about it. If he's standing there alone wearing the mask, and then he takes it off in order to sit face to face with Jimmy Kimmel, that doesn't make any sense. If you really want to um, uh, prove that that you're you know you're trying to support the whole mask thing, you would wear the mask when you're talking to him, right? <laughs> so that's just dumb. I think, by, what's the name of the sidekicks there? The uh, guy from Mexico? I think, I think Biden walked up to him thinking it was Jimmy Kimmel. Guillermo, that's the guy. Oh, yeah, he, he did look confused there. He did look confused. All right, here we go. Loves him. It's California. Of course, everybody loves him. Thank you for coming, sir. Oh, listen to that. The big pop. Good to be here, man. I um. Good to be here, man. Ah! <laughs> listen to this crowd. Got my wife coming. You're, you're wonderful. The wonderful first lady is here tonight. Your Hello. How oh, nice. How oh, nice that the first lady came along. Oh, she did. You just made the commencement speech at Los Angeles Community College. Yes. Oh, By the way, oh, I'm nice. Jill Biden's husband. She's right there. <laughs> Welcome. It's wonderful to have you here. Good to be uh, back, Jimmy. It's I thought good maybe you wanted me to... Just stay on Fox all the time. <laughs> you know, they're very concerned that I might not ask you serious questions. So I don't want, oh, you know. they really ask serious questions. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I don't um. want to upset them at all. Do you mind if I ask you some serious questions? Because this is, not at um, all. unfortunately. Not at all. I never mind having a conversation with someone really smart. Well, uh, Guillermo, maybe you need to take over. <laughs> <laughs> I will. No, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. We, uh, we were here in September of 2019, and one of the things we talked about at length was gun violence. And you said that we need to do something about this gun violence, particularly when it comes to our schools. And here we are a couple years later. We're halfway through this year already. There have been, what, 27 shootings at schools? I guess, I mean, just to get into it, why haven't we done anything about this? Well, I think uh, a lot of it's intimidation uh, by the NRA. and uh, look. This is not your father's Republican Party. This is a, a MAGA party. It's a very different, a, a very different Republican Party. See, I don't believe that. Um, well, then, is he saying he's intimidated? Is he intimidated? Is his party intimidated by by what he just suggested? Because if you're indicating that you're intimidated as the president, I don't know if. Uh, if people are going to like that, it would, would they want to support someone easily intimidated? And, uh, and so you find people who uh, are worried, I believe, that if they vote for rational gun policy, they're going to be primary and they're going to, they're going to lose in a hard run. Oh, I see. Primary. Okay. Is that your take when you speak to these guys mm. and women behind the scenes? I don't necessarily believe that either. I, I think that Republicans who do not want to vote for gun control. Like there was a justice measure that passed in the house and it's largely ceremonial. It doesn't mean anything because it's not going to pass in the Senate. Um, the people that the Republicans that would not support that, um, it's all about the second amendment and the people that they represent 
support the Second Amendment. And that kind of goes hand in hand with most of the Republican Party. So I don't know if it's necessarily intimidation, but more a belief set that they believe that the Second Amendment cannot be in any way um, whittled down because the idea being, okay, now you're taking away some of my rights in gun ownership. What's next? It's a whole slippery slope argument. And I actually do see it. I understand um, why, why they would feel that way means that they are is there any honesty do they acknowledge that they would like to do something well i think many of them do uh you know i get in trouble for saying this but uh i get on uh, we have very different views on a lot of things but i uh i've always had a straight relationship with uh with the majority with the republican leader Mitch come on spit it out fuckhead McConnell. you know he's a guy that when he says something he means it I disagree with a lot of what he says, but he means it. Oh, bullshit. When uh, when Trump caused that riot, he was done with Trump. Now he's not done with Trump. There are a number of... Like when he said we can't confirm a Supreme Court justice with a year left. That's right. And then said well, the opposite. Well, well, well. <laughs> oh, so Kimmel is, is contradicting what the president just said, kind of like what I just did. And now he's uncomfortable, so he's laughing in the president's face. You no, know, what he did, I mean, look, he's a, oh. he's a leader of, of a party that's moved very hard right. And so in order to get anything done, he, uh, he has a different problem than he did early on before Trump became president. It seems like maybe the party has moved hard right, but I don't know that the people have moved they hard have. right. They because haven't. people overwhelmingly believe we should have serious background That's checks. They thing. overwhelmingly. Look, Jimmy, you may remember, the last time we did something serious about guns was when I passed the assault weapons ban. I was the guy that sponsored that. All right, here we go. This is when he talks about, see, he did something great. I hate it when people do this. This is what I did. I, every president's done it. Limiting the number of bullets that could be in a magazine, a whole background checks, a whole range of things. And we passed. And violent crime and gun crime dropped off. But it, I can only get it passed. I'd like to look that up. I, I would never believe if someone told me that they did a measure and then it, okay, this happened. I would, I would, it, maybe it did, but I'd need to actually see that. For 10 years, it had to be reauthorized. And when the first Bush administration came along, they didn't reauthorize it. We didn't have the votes. And so what happened was, all of a sudden, it came back. You could own assault weapons again. And guess what? Crime went up significantly, three times. If I had a nickel for every time he says, guess what? I mean, so there is a direct correlation between the kinds of weapons that can be had. Look, I, I met with every single family member of all those kids who were killed and the teachers killed out in, in, in down in Uvalde, Texas. And um, they stayed with me for almost four hours, over 200 of them, meaning family and extended family. And the stories they told and the pain you could see on their faces, it just made you, uh, I mean, it, it, it just, it leaves such a... Shouldn't we demand that every senator in the United States sit with those families? Well, the answer... I think Jimmy just started crying. I think we, we, we should make the demand. Here's what has to happen. All of you folks, and I hope, for, and I'm not being facetious when I say this, hope the Republicans here as well. You got to make sure that this becomes a voting issue. It's got to be one of those issues where you decide your position on the issue, Senator or the candidate for House or Senate, on what we're going to do on us with assault weapons and how have to have, maybe they'll have 300 rounds in a magazine. And mag I mean, what you say on those things is going to determine how I'm going to vote for you. It should be one of those issues. You're right. It is our... Okay, so he's encouraging people to uh, vote people out if they don't do anything. ...fault that people in the House and Congress can take responsibility for it, but it is our fault because we need to stop this. We need to do it. Well, we did last time, as I said, and it, and it expired in 2004... Can't you and, and issue an executive order? Trump passed those out like Halloween candy. Yes, sir. I think. It, well, I it, that it's a good question. I think it's a fair question. Executive order, why not? I mean, if you're so hell-bent on it, issue an executive order, right? That's something that could happen. 
Well, I, I, I have issued executive orders within the power of the presidency to be able to deal with these, everything having to do with guns, gun ownership, whether or not you have to have a waiting, all, all the things that are within my power. But what I don't want to do, and I'm not being facetious, I don't want to emulate Trump's abuse of the Constitution and constitutional authority. And, and so... Can you imagine if he said, uh, if he did an executive order with some type of sweeping um, uh, order, how... <laughs> How that would unfold, I mean, you you honestly might experience some type of domestic terrorism if something like that happened. And I, I, I mean that sincerely because I often get asked, look, the Republicans don't play it square. Why do you play it square? Yeah. Well, well, guess what? If, well, guess what? If we do the same thing they do, our democracy would literally be in jeopardy. Well, I mean, yeah. I'm not a joke. And I, I understand that argument, but also it's like you're playing Monopoly with somebody who, you know, won't pass go and won't follow any of the rules. And how do you ever make any progress if they're not following the rules? Well, you got to send them to jail, uh, you know. Oh! Yeah. Oh, witty. How about that? Biden is on the top of his game with that one. <laughs> Go directly to jail. The president- All right, I can't take any more of this. <clears throat> I'll link it up. You can watch it on your own. Good that he got him. Good that he's talking about it. But, I mean, ultimately, this uh, this probably isn't going to amount to too much. I still don't think that any changing of laws um, is going to do anything. I really don't. I think that... Um, I think that there could be some, some laws about background checks and things like that. But, uh, ultimately, I think this is going to require... Uh, something a little bit more drastic. It's going to take too long. There's going to be more school shootings that are going to take place, and we're going to be right back having this conversation again. I'm just convinced of it. Okay, I want to show you a video of a boxer. Okay. This happened at some low-level boxing thing in, uh, in South Africa. The one guy looks to be winning the fight. He had been winning the fight most of it. And uh, his opponent falls, slips and falls. And then the guy who looked to be winning the fight, something happened in his brain. And I'm going to share it with you right here. Okay. There you go. You see the one dude guy in the right there. He's uh, he's getting ready to get to fall through the ropes. And the guy you see right by the ref there. Which is bizarre. Let's take a look. In the walks onto a hard jab. Okay, so the one guy goes down, and the ref like uh, he kind of like uh, breaks him up. And then he turns. And then the ref says, okay, fight. Come on, it's time to start to fight. And then the guy to his left, watch what he does. And then he looks at the referee like he carries on like he wants to fight. And he, he goes over to the ref, and, and then the ref gets out of the way, and then the dude starts swinging punches at the air while his opponent is behind him. What? His brain broke. Throwing punches. He doesn't know where he no. is. No. No. Okay. So the guy's brain breaks. The re- You can see by the venue how small time of an event this is, but it's still a professional boxing match. The guy's brain breaks. The ref says, all right, he just lost his mind and awards the fight, the victory to the other guy. And then he looks at the referee. Look at He carries on like he wants to fight. And he doesn't know throwing <laughs> punches. He doesn't know where he Good is. Good thing the other guy didn't, like, bash him in the back of the head. No. no. This happened, Colin, almost... Wow. Between okay. okay, so this guy doesn't look like he's doing too well. And you're right. In fact, he's dead. There we go. The guy... Was his brain was bleeding at this point, and no one knew it. And at this point in time, it officially scrambled his eggs. They stopped the fight the next day.
dead. Yeah, what the fuck? Now. Look at his body reaction now, how he responds. He's looking, he turns, and then all of a sudden, inexplicably, he turns and he chases the referee. He thinks the referee is the opponent. The <laughs> ref's telling him, go fight that guy. And he's there throwing he punches. Go. And oh, no. By the, referee. the referee did the right thing, and he protected the fighter. Uh, the, the opponent is jumping up and down like, yeah, I did it. I did it. I won because his brain went full R word. Ladies and gentlemen, this is. Yeah. And uh, so no shit. Uh, he, they ended up immediately getting medical attention in there. And um, boxer Simiso Bothalezi died. Uh, just a, a short day or two after he got disoriented, disoriented during the match. He was only 24. They placed him in an induced coma. He had uh, been winning the fight. And they're saying now that he may have injured himself before the fight because he didn't really even take a punch during the whole fight. He was kicking the guy's ass. So they're not, they're not sure what the fuck happened. And, uh, but wow, that was just the craziest thing. And that he ended up dying. Oh my God. If you're the guy who won the fight, you're like, yeah, I won it. And, and I killed him too. Oh no. Shit. What the fuck is going on here? Wow. That was the weirdest thing to watch. Holy shit. All right. I can't end on that note. I got to see if the queen of the forest is here. If she's yet awake. She indicated she's exhausted, so if I wake her up, we're going to hear her yell. By the way, I cut my hair for her. What do you guys think? You like my hair? Cut it myself. Oh, no. She's still out like a light. Oh, no. All right. That didn't happen. All right. Asshole of the day in moments. Advertise with the Eric Zane Show podcast. Reach out to me on the Shoreliner Striping inbox. Eric at EricZaneShow.com. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you how it works. Eric at EricZaneShow.com. A&E Heating and Cooling. Mario. Not Mario. The all... <laughs> Another Latino. The almighty Joe Martinez from A&E Heating and Cooling wants to work for you. Get an, a, uh, an AC tune-up by calling 616-516-8579 today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Joe Martinez. If you get in the weeds, you need to make an after-hours service call. You can call uh, there. They'll take care of everything. That might cost you a little bit, but still, he'll get you, he'll get you running. Haven't really needed the AC too much this year, but it's coming. 616-516-8579. The AC tune-up, just 79 bucks. Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. 616-532-6600. Servicing all makes and models, with the exception of Volkswagens. EVs, hybrids, regular, plain old-fashioned, gas-motored cars. Irvine's Auto Repair, they'll keep you running on the road. Preventative maintenance. If you get in the world of hurt because something goes wrong, they can help you. Or if you just like dropping money into a money pit car, 616-532-6600. ER Vines. ER Vines online. Check out their amazing Google reviews. Speaking of cars, get a new car at Sarah Honda Granville. S-E-R-R-A. SarahHondaGranville.com. That's where I want you to go. To uh, If you're in the market for a new or a certified pre-owned vehicle, Sarah Honda Granville. Honda cars are some of the longest running on the road today, and uh, you will not be let down. I am partial to the Accord Hybrid. Great car. Fucking amazing. Oh, my God. Check out an Accord Hybrid today. Fantastic automobile. SarahHondaGranville.com. S-E-R-R-A HondaGranville.com. Your asshole of the day. Brought to you by TC Paintball and JM Synthetics. 
Rick from TC Paintball will join us tomorrow for Trigger Time with Rick. The unofficial title of Rick's segment. Yesterday's asshole was the Indianapolis Children's Museum for the Juneteenth Watermelon Salad. We talked about the Queen of the Forest being back home. Talked about running. Talked about my heel. Talked about being still fat. Celestial excitement. Columbia has 17 billion extra dollars at the bottom of the sea. Further proof that I'm old. My hatred for loud lawnmowers. We talked to Kyle from Dumpster Divers. Uh oh. Kyle from Dumpster Divers. Uh huh. Your asshole of the day today. Kyle for wrecking the birthday party. First of all, burns his kid's finger off. And then, before anybody has a chance to even react, screams at him for uh, insisting that he blow out the candles. What an asshole. Oh, my God. Way to go. You earned that one. That is your asshole of the day on today's Eric Zane Show podcast. And that is my time. Hey, I really appreciate you being part of this show. You guys are the best. I'll talk to you down the road. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Till next time. Bye-bye. You're finally at that hot new spot. The one your friends keep raving about. Sitting across from your date. It's going... Another round? Really well. And that dish you've been dying to try? Oh, it's headed your way. You can smell it. Hear it sizzling fresh off that skillet as it comes closer, closer, and served. Go ahead, enjoy. After your phone sneaks a bite first. When you're with Amex, it's not if it's going to happen, but when. American Express, don't live life without it. Target has laundry day covered because they offer a great selection of concentrated Tide Pods to help with all your laundry needs. Tide Pods clean, freshen, and help rejuvenate your clothes with odor fighters and stain removers. Did you know Tide Pods clean better than the leading liquid bargain detergent? Tide Pods are powerful enough to make your whites white and your brights bright, even in cold water. Just toss in one Tide Pod for small loads, two for medium, three for large. It's that easy. For great value and convenient pickup options, get Tide Pods today at Target.